Hi, Professor Vogt here with another JTools. This is how to do multiple locations on a map by using Google Maps. And this is great if you have 6, 8, 10 addresses and you don't mind typing it each in individually. But if you have more than that, you might want to consider putting them all in an Excel spreadsheet and importing them into a program. And for that, you'd use Google Fusion. So check out the video for that. But as we start talking about mapping with Google Maps, first let's think about why would you want to make a map? And Professors Kermitas and Lysak did a survey of news directors and they found that most said they'd like to use the station's website to provide new and additional information to users. For example, extra video footage or documents or historical perspectives or maybe a map. And one even said, we want to create new content that surrounds the TV story Otherwise, we're only doing a partial job. So we want you with these JTools units to be able to do a full job and to have complementary ways to add to your radio or TV story. So here's a story that uses a map. It's a story about the food desert on the southwest side of Syracuse. And if you haven't heard of food deserts, that's an area where residents are unable to get a lot of healthy food. They might have some convenience stores, but not a supermarket. And if we scroll down, you can see there's a map that accompanies this story. And if you do close-up look, see how this area here on the southwest side, there is no chain supermarket. So each of the dots lists the different one of the chains, Wegmans, Price Choppers, No James, Aldi's, Tops, Save-A-Lot. And if you click on one of the place markers, for example, this price chopper marker, then you'll see there's some copy that you can put in about the price chopper chain or something about that store. So this hopefully could be something helpful and visual to add to your story. So how do we do that? First, we're going to create a map in Google My Maps. And then we're going to enter each location for a grocery store. That's a chain store we want to put in. And then we can change the colors and the shapes of the pointers, add labels, and add other information. And then it's pretty easy. You just save it and you can share it with others or you can embed it, for example, on the NCC News website. But before we go through those three steps, let me just remind you that it's always important when you're working with data to know what your data is. First, you want to check the source. I used Google and a couple other sites to make sure I had all the chain stores in Syracuse. But then I had to think, which are the chains? Because there's just one No James store in Syracuse, but I did find out there's another one in Marsalis, so I could justify that it is a chain. And I had to look up Save a Lot to make sure that I thought that was a chain and not just a convenience store. So you always want to make sure you understand the terms and double check dates, names, numbers, addresses. Okay, so let's start. The first thing would be to go to Google Maps and you do that by going to Google and then if you click this nine dot icon over at the right you will get the pull down menu and then go to Maps. Once you're at Maps, look up at the top and look for that icon, click it, and then you'll get a pull down menu and you can go to My Maps. Going over to my personal account now, you'll see that I have already created several maps. But if we want to create one, we would go to the pencil icon, Create, and then we could title the map. I clicked on Untitled Map and I'm going to put Supermarkets in Syracuse. And then if I wanted, I could put a description in there. Then the next step is to start adding locations. So the tops closest to campus, I know, is at 620 Nottingham. And I click and there's the pinpoint. So I know it's right there. Now if I click on this pinpoint, then I click add to map, that will officially put it there and I know that because it's changed color. You'll also notice over here I have the address and if I click on the paint box, then there's an easy way that I could change the icon. Maybe I want to make it a square and I want to make it blue. 
So just to recap, we put in the address, and when we saw the pointer come up on the map, we clicked on that and told it to add that pointer to the map, and then it changed color. We can then click on that pointer and retitle it and put some description in there. Then we went over to the top left, found the address, and off to the right of it was the paint bucket, and we clicked on that and had the opportunity to change the color of the icon and the shape of the icon. Two other things I want to show you. This base map will change the background so you can see which background is best for the highlights that you want. And then if you go up to individual styles, see here where it says no labels? If we click there and we put the name, that will show up whatever we have put in the box when we identified that pointer. You see here 620 Nottingham Road shows up. So if we wanted to change that, just click on the pencil to edit and we could put tops. This is the tops closest to the SU campus or whatever we wanted to put there. So those are the basics. You would just add the next address and the next address, and they would continue to be added here and down the line. There's a couple other options besides changing the base map or changing the icons. You can actually put in some custom icons. So if you click More Icons, then you'll see that there are several different ones here that are pre-made for you. Or if you have a photo and you put it at a website, for example, you add the photo to the media library at NCC News and get the web address, then you could put it in here. And let me show you how that looks. I did that on another map. Here's an example of United Methodist Churches in Syracuse, and you'll see how I use the United Methodist logo. And I did that, you'll see, by going to the media library at NCC News and adding it there. The first time it was such a small icon, I had to take it in Photoshop and make it bigger. And then you'll see here is the URL address, and you want to copy that and put back. So here you could see how I could choose that icon and it would show up. So that's about it. There are ways to add video as well to import from a spreadsheet and if you're interested in those go back to the original JTools website and I have a link for some tutorials that will tell you how to do that. And anytime you can come back and edit your map and update it. So when you're ready then to share it, you can certainly do that on this button. But if you do want to share it on the web, you have to make sure that you have made it public rather than private. So you would change that here. To embed it, click this three dot icon in the gray bar and says embed on my site and it picks up the iframe code, so you just want to copy that. Then when you go to NCC News, you would copy the iframe code in. So you go to text, and you'll see here it's copied in. Now the default width is going to be something like 640, and that will be too wide for the NCC News columns. So I found our columns fit better if you make the width about 575, and the height about 431. And then just save and update, and your map should appear. Obviously, always check it out. So just to refresh, you're going to create the map in Google My Maps, enter each location, change the pointer colors or shapes, add any kind of labels, make the labels show up, add information, save it, and then share or embed it. And again, the links and information you might need to refresh yourself on this are all on the JTools website.
three, two, one. Going over to my personal account now, you'll see here that I have already three, two, one. Going over to my personal account now, you'll see that I have already created several maps. Three, two, one. Going over to my personal account now, you'll see here that I have already three, two, one. Going over to my personal account now, you'll see that I have already created several maps.